What is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new Pokemon Go Top 5 video. Today we're going to be talking about the 5 features I most want to see in Pokemon Go when it's finished. So let's get right into it. So to kick off the top 5, I just want to say that shiny Pokemon would be a great feature to add into Pokemon Go. And I know we've talked about it a lot before and I've had a couple videos on it actually. But I definitely want to see shiny Pokemon in the end product completely 100% think it'd be a fantastic idea and make it so even when people are finished with the Pokedex even when they're finished taking over all the forts or gyms in their town and they've already done everything they can do and got all the achievements and everything shiny Pokemon are still there you can still go shiny hunting and if they're still elusive and difficult to find then it's definitely going to add a lot of playtime to the game overall. I mean, honestly, if you look at XY, Omega Ruby, and Alpha Sapphire, there are still a lot of people that play the game just for shiny hunting that probably would have put it down by now if it weren't for shiny hunting alone being a lot easier to get into and being something that a lot of people can take part in in social media, Twitch, and on YouTube streaming. So it definitely has garnered quite the community, and I definitely think it'd be a great addition for the game. Moving on to number four. So number four is more of a question than an actual hope because I'm almost positive they're going to add in the other generations at some point, but how often are they actually going to add them in? A lot of people have been talking about making it an annual thing where every year they add in another generation and it kind of brings in everyone that's finished the Pokedex for the generation before. Now, I think this is a great idea, but I just want to get it out of the way and say that I would love having every generation right off the bat. I just don't think it's realistic, especially when the beta only includes the first generation. And honestly, I'm really in favor of an increase of the Pokemon that we get annually, so definitely think it's a great idea, and it'll bring people back in on an annual basis, along with all the other little updates and everything they're going to be doing, I'm sure. Ingress, as you probably saw if you're on the Silk Road subreddit, has had a lot of major updates and major in-game overhauls of features and everything, so I definitely think the possibility remains that they'll put them in quicker than that, but if it was annual, I would have no issues with it. Moving on to number three, will there be player versus player combat? That is definitely one of the biggest questions at this point in time. I say personally that it would be incomplete without player versus player combat, but that's my personal opinion. Again, I'm going to be making content for this, playing it tons, no matter what it turns out to be, but I will say that it probably is going to feel a little incomplete without player versus player face-to-face -face combat. So I will say that if the gym combat system ends up being a little bit more interactive and a little bit better than we're seeing right now and what it appears to be at the moment, then I will sort of retract that statement because at the moment, again, the moves look like they're going to be great. It looks like there's going to be a diverse move pool for each Pokemon and that there is going to be some interactivity, but not a lot of player versus player combat. And that's what we're looking for at the moment. Obviously, they have not turned it on in the beta yet, or we would have heard something about it. But right now, that is one of the biggest questions and probably one of my biggest hopes at this point for the game is that there is actual player versus player combat. Number two is a point that I came to after a lot of thinking about this because this video has actually been planned quite a few days in advance and I definitely think that this is something that you'll come to as well after you think about it a little bit further. So my number two biggest hope is that they allow you to change your team after you start the game and here's why. So I can totally understand your skepticism right now but I'm going to aim to try to change your opinion on this by the end of the video. So let me just try to paint a picture for you, okay? You're late to getting the app. A lot of people in your town or city have decided to get the app before you and you sort of missed the hype train initially, so you don't exactly know why everyone's enjoying the game and why it's so much fun, but you decide to get it on a whim sometime. You see it in the app store or something and you just decide to download it. And you pick your, your team, you just, let's say that you like Charizard, so you pick red. Okay, and let's just say a lot of other people in your town or city have decided the same thing that they used to play Pokemon Red when they were little and they got their Charmander and it evolved into a Charizard and it was a big nostalgic thing for them. So they chose the red team as well. So you've got like 50 red players in your city that are actively going to all of the different gyms and taking them over. So let's just say that there aren't as many people that have fond memories of Pokemon Blue or Yellow, and you have 10 people in each of those teams. So Blue Team you have 10, Yellow Team you have 10, and Red Team you have 50. Now I guess you guys can probably see where this is going, but I could see imbalances naturally forming in cities and in towns because of this. 
Obviously, this is going to be a bit of an issue because in Ingress, as you can see, there are a lot of people that complain about having lots of resistance people or lots of enlightened people in their town, and they can't really fight them because they just get overwhelmed with the sheer amount of people on the other team. Now, it balances out generally across the world, and people go back and forth as to what the most powerful team is. But the problem remains that in small areas, it can probably get a little overwhelming. Now, in Pokemon Go, again, it is fair to say that this local area is more of a stress because in Ingress, obviously, you have your comparisons that go around the world, and it sort of is a 50-50 toss-up, and a lot of times it goes back and forth between who's winning. But in Pokemon Go, each actual gym is going to be what you're fighting over, so... If your town is generally just people that live there and not a traveling town, you can probably expect to have the same people turning out to each gym on a regular basis. And since Pokemon Go appears to rely heavily on your local player base, I would say it's also fair to say that if there are imbalances, it's going to ruin the game for the people on the other teams and for the people on the really overpowered team, because they're never actually going to have to defend their points, defend their gyms with their Pokemon. So what's the point? So I hope that sort of convinces you that this is a pretty big issue and that maybe we should kind of make a stink about this if it's not addressed when the game actually comes out because imbalances within a game like this really make or break it for a lot of people. Now obviously the traveling individual probably doesn't have a lot to worry about. They'll just travel from gym to gym. Eventually they'll find gyms that are under control by their own team and eventually they'll find gyms that are under attack from people on their own team. So that'll be totally fine. But people that are generally in a static place where they don't go a lot of other places and they don't travel a lot will have a pretty big issue with this. But I don't want to rant about that too much, so we're just going to go into the biggest question and my biggest hope for this entire game. How do you evolve Eevee? Now, I know this is probably something you haven't really thought of as a concern, and if you have, then you probably already know the answer to it right now, which is that we have no idea what's going on. Eevee is apparently extremely difficult to find, as we've heard from multiple beta testers at this point, so most people have only caught a couple of them at most, and we haven't really heard anything else on how you can evolve them, but they do have a crystal shard amount tied to them, which is 30, so you need to catch 30 Eevees to be able to evolve one. So we have to wait until someone's able to catch 30 rare Eevees to be able to see how exactly they're going to let you evolve or choose the evolution that Eevee goes into. Now, let me just be the first to tell you that I'm going to be making my own video on that with my own take on how they should do evolution within Pokemon Go, but that's far off into the future, so let's not talk about that too much. But guys, that is going to be about it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Hope you're enjoying the whole coverage I've been doing of Pokemon Go recently. If you want to see more top five videos, drop a like, drop me a comment saying you want more. Really, really helpful to see what you guys want and what you guys don't want because honestly, you get a lot of views if you mention Pokemon Go in the title of anything. So it's really important to actually have people that are like, hey, I want to see more of this or hey, I don't really want to see more of this, especially when you're someone that watched a lot of my content and you like things and you don't like things I love to hear your input so please let me know if you want to see more of these in the future and thanks for the general support lately guys it has been fantastic the channel's been booming lately and all of the people that I've talked to lately about the game are just as hyped as I am so I am just in a great place right now this is fantastic making videos for you guys and everything for this awesome community that's forming around Pokemon Go so hope to see you back here for the next Pokemon Go video until next time guys have a fantastic day peace